All right, laminate flooring. This is, I would say, commanding the lion's share of the new flooring market now, okay? <clears throat> very, very common. Still pretty inexpensive. We're still pretty low on the, on the pay scale with this style of flooring. I have six to $10 per square foot. Again, that is like installed price, okay? You can buy this stuff. I don't know that you'd want to, but you can, you can buy this stuff for a dollar a square foot, okay? It's not gonna be the nicest looking or the highest quality stuff, but you can get really cheap laminate flooring. Um, what it is, it's, there's a couple different kinds. The first kind of incarnation of it was like a piece of plywood with a wood veneer on it, okay? Like a very thin veneer. Then it evolved, okay? And basically, I would say on the lower scale, what we have is particle board with like a vinyl backing and a plastic sticker on top of it, okay? And that's, that's the product. We're also seeing like vinyl, like laminate flooring that's just purely vinyl. It's solid vinyl. Okay, so again, people like that because it's like waterproof, but do we want to have an impermeable product in our house? I don't know. That's a good question. But all, all of this stuff, we haven't talked about wood flooring yet, but all of this stuff, I would say, was developed in response to not only the high cost of wood flooring, but also people not wanting to wait around for the steps of wood flooring, laying it, sanding it, filling it, finishing it, okay? Um, you could come into a house and do all of the laminate flooring in a day and be done, okay? And not spend very much money. Some of the, some of the products have like an integral pad, like a foam pad on them. Some of them you roll out like a foam pad and then put the laminate on top of that. And it gives it kind of a little bit cushier feel. Most of these are floating floors. Okay, It means that we're not nailing them. We're not gluing them down. They just have a tongue and a groove and they click together. They snap together. Okay, and Typically what you're going to do is you're going to start in one corner of the room. And kind of like how we do our hardy siding, we're going to we're gonna create like a stagger step. Okay, we're gonna cut some pieces shorter so that we don't just have seams lining up the whole way through the room. We'll start in the corner, lay them out, and work our way across, okay? Another thing about the cheap flooring is the patterns repeat really quickly, so the, the more expensive stuff, if you spend more money, there's going to be more patterns. It's going to be harder to pick up like a distinct pattern. But if you bought like really cheap stuff and didn't make any attempts to try and randomize your seams, you would see this as you're sitting in the room, repeating pattern over and over again, just stepping up across the entire room. And, I, and that would... That would bother me, okay? Maybe not everyone would notice that, but I think most of you would pick up on that also. So there is kind of an art to blending this stuff, and then there's also something to be said for, you know, you get what you pay for, okay? This is becoming a classic homeowner job um, because it's re really readily available. Um, it's pretty inexpensive. They sell it as kind of a do-it-yourself thing, but there is some tricks to it, okay? Um, in the video I've got posted about it, there are some techniques that people skip a lot of the times, okay? Like you want to undercut the door jams, you know, people, this, this stuff doesn't look good when you cut it, okay? Um, you want to really want to hide the edges under some baseboard or under some base shoe or something like that, okay? But anyway, let me focus on the pros here. It's inexpensive. It's easy to install. It's quick to install. It's really easy to clean. Okay, you can run around and mop this stuff. Um, it doesn't really stain or anything like that. It's like plastic on the top, okay? 
surprisingly enough, given how thin it is um, and the fact that it's just like particle board with a sticker on it, it's pretty durable. It's, it's pretty tough stuff. Um, it's hard. It's, it's hard to dent it or ding it. Okay. You'll notice that with, with wood floors, if you drop something on it, it'll dent the floor, but you drop something on laminate and it, it just kind of bounces off of it. Okay. Unless, it, unless it's something really sharp or something like that, you can totally puncture it. Um, or if it's really heavy, you can break the stuff. But generally speaking, I mean, you drop stuff on it and it, it's pretty tough. Okay. It, it does take a beating. Um, it wears well, meaning it can take a lot of abuse, but once it starts to degrade, it doesn't look good. Once you break through that sticker, you'll start seeing like the particle board and stuff like that. Um, whereas like a wood floor or something like that, as that went to, you know, 200 years down the line, a wood floor is going to look even better just the way it's aged, but not necessarily the case with these other types of flooring we've, we've talked about. Depending on how much money you spend on this product, it can look similar to wood. Okay. One nice thing about it is that it is all very modular and very uniform. It's got a, a tongue on one side, a groove on the other side. It's got a tongue at one end and a groove at one end. So everything snaps together and locks together. They're all the same length when you pull them out of the box. Okay. Unless you get the solid vinyl flooring and that, that that stuff they call LVP luxury vinyl plank it's very luxurious um, anything that's not LVP is not going to be good around water it will swell really bad um, if it contacts water and then it doesn't ever like go back to its shape okay it can be pretty dimensionally unstable it's, it's critical that when you buy this stuff, you acclimate it to your house or whatever you're putting it in. Sometimes the stuff's coming from the desert, okay? It might be 40% humidity when it was sitting in a warehouse in Arizona, and then it comes to Eureka, and it's 89% humidity, okay? So if you took that stuff that was dry, opened the package up, installed it in your house, Two days later, it's going to go after it swells up with moisture. Okay. And, you know, look at bad laminate flooring install pictures or videos or something. That stuff will just, it'll lift. Okay. Because it'll, it'll expand as much as it can since it's floating. It'll expand as much as it can until it hits the wall. And then it'll just start buckling up in the middle. Okay. One of the, really challenging things about this product is that you can't really go into the middle and like cut a piece out and repair it. Okay. Uh, you, you have to start at one end and unstitch it all the way back to the bad board, swap that one out and then put it all back together. Okay. Like I mentioned before, the, the patterns can get really repetitive depending on how much money you've spent. Um, and it can be, it can be dangerous. It can be really slick. It's really, really smooth. There's no texture to it. Um, there's nothing like, you know, tile has grout lines and stuff like that that can give you a little bit of like different elevations and stuff that you can grip. But that laminate flooring is just all one plane and it's a very smooth plane. So it can be slippery. It could be dangerous. And um, especially if you put it over, say, a slab or something like that. There's hardly any thickness to that stuff, so it can be hard underfoot. It can be uncomfortable. So again, I know I'm, I'm hitting you pretty hard with these this old house flooring install videos, but they're really good. Um, Tom Silva, great carpenter, um, he's got some nice tips on installing laminate floors. So I've put this in the Week 10 videos page. Please watch this and enjoy it.